Welcome to the Working Man Community Podcast. I am your host, Brandon T, and I am here to deliver the news and entertainment that you need to know, Working Man. When I say Working Man, I'm not politically correct at all when it. Men, women, whoever out here getting it. And with that being said, let's get started. So, there's a problem out here in the economy, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Everything's, everything's high. Everything's super expensive. Inflation is taking over. You know what I'm saying? You go to, you know what I'm saying? You go to the grocery store, high in there. You go to fast food restaurants. Like, hey, fast food used to be quick and cheap. Nah, it's slow and expensive now. And so forth. And there's a lot of, and there's other things that are going up. You know what I'm saying? Your favorite things and all that good stuff. And so the, the Federal Reserve is trying to, in their words, fix the problem. Now, fixing the problem is uh, is is intended to help you, working man. But it seems like you may be the problem, and so forth. And so, like I said, so the last Fed meeting here was last week, and Jerome Powell had to say this. So let's let's go and see what see what Jerome Powell thinks about what's going on. Good afternoon. <clears throat> My colleagues and I remain squarely focused on our dual mandate to promote maximum employment and stable prices for the American people. We understand the hardship that high inflation is causing, and we remain strongly committed to bringing inflation back down to our 2% goal. Price stability is the responsibility oh, of the Federal hold Reserve. Hold on one second. So, so, Jerome, so you said that. You got the dual mandate between bringing inflation down and jobs. Okay, bet. You know what I'm saying? That's a, that's a good that's a good track. So, you know what I'm saying? Inflation, let's, let's understand, people. Inflation is, they say inflation prices go up when there's too few goods and, and money chasing it. Okay, bet, bet. Makes sense, makes sense. And, and, and so forth. And so, you, so you're trying to fix the too much money taking goods. So, I guess that uh, we're trying to, you know, say put more people to work to make sure that um, they're, they're making more stuff faster. Is that what's happening, in Jerome? Without price stability, the economy doesn't work for anyone. In particular, without price stability, we will not achieve a sustained period of strong labor market conditions that benefit all. Since early last year, the FOMC has significantly tightened the stance of monetary policy. Today, we took another step by raising our policy interest rate a quarter percentage point, and we are continuing to reduce our securities holdings at a brisk pace. We've covered... So, Jerome, a- so let me get this right. So, so, so I guess we're not going to take the track of we need more people working to build more stuff, make it easier to build more stuff and make the price come down. So I guess we're taking, you're taking the other route. I said, hey, uh, let's make it so it's hard to buy said stuff. All right. A lot of ground, and the full effects of our tightening have yet to be felt. Looking ahead, we will continue to take a data-dependent approach in determining the extent of additional policy firming that may be appropriate. I'll have more to say about monetary policy after briefly reviewing economic developments. All right, so cool. So, right, so he said the, the full effects of the tightening has not been affected. Full effect. So let, let's, let's check this out. You know, so you know what you know, you know what it makes me makes it sound like to me, your humble host over here, is that say that think about it right there. Go outside your yard right there, and your your grass ain't as green as you think it should be. You know what I'm saying? You 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 don't watch golf on TV like damn. And then you know what I'm saying? You're about to look at uh, the football game, about to start up, and like, oh, the football game's so green. And then you might even look over there, your neighbor over there to be in his yard out there all the time, just doing a little stuff. He's like, oh, this is yard green. You look at your grass, I'm like, okay, bet, I need my grass green. So you throw your seeds out there today, watered up, and you come back and you look at it, you know what I'm saying, next week. And you're like, that ain't. Why it ain't why it ain't as green as over there? You throw more seeds out there and water it up again. And he's like, and another week of my why it ain't. You throw more seeds out there, and next thing you know what you done done. You done burn up your grass with the seeds. 
Cause you ain't letting you ain't letting it sit there. You ain't took time let it let it generate the exposed to let the water hit it just right. You over there just keep throwing more on it. And now you got now you got worse spots. Cause now you know what I'm saying you got some are green and some are brown because of the seeds burning the grass. And is that what Jerome Powell's doing to the economy? Just keep throwing more on it and so forth. And let's uh, let's like I said. Let me go to another report. Let's see. And let's 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 get a real feel what what the what the inflation rate and interest rates are doing now. Let's go over this to ABC News. ABC News Mike from the Federal Reserve since March of last year, and it takes the Fed's key short-term interest rate to its highest level in 22 years. And perhaps even more importantly, the Fed left the door open today for future interest rate hikes. They're just not sure they have fully tackled inflation just yet. We know that inflation is cooling. It's now at 3%, down from more than 9% in June of last year, but still not at that 2% level uh, the Fed is looking for. Today, the Fed describing economic growth as moderate, but said it will continue to monitor the data when it comes to future interest rate hikes. Some on Wall Street believe we could see at least one more before the end of the year. Kira? Two percent. Think about it like that. Why, why do you think the Fed wants that two percent? Just two percent. Now, working man, check this out. Now, think about it. You know, I want you to time travel with me back there. Back to 16, 17, 18, 2016, 17, 18. You know, when you, you know what I'm saying, you had your raises and so forth, and you get that cost of living raise. You know that number? It's like 3% at the most. You know what I'm saying? You try to get that 3% raise, you know what I'm saying? The, and that funny is going along with inflation. See, like I said, the government only wants you, only want you to make a certain amount of money. You know what I'm saying? It only needs you doing a certain amount of things. And like I said, I know you're like, hey, I know you're like, yo, hey, Brandon, you know what I mean? I said, that's a good theory and so forth, but I don't know if if that's true. Well, I'm going to give you this. Let's go to C, CNBC. You know what I'm saying? We're going to go to uh, Spotbox, and we're going to talk to Jude here. And let Jude tell you how she really feels about certain things. She's an economist. You know, she, you know what I'm saying? You know, she works somebody and so forth. And so she's an economist and so forth. And, and let's go to her. It could be that the inflation was caused primarily by the historic level of fiscal transfers during COVID. And that money is now running out. And so we see a decline in that excess demand. Then I think the lesson we should draw is when you pay people not to work, you're going to get excess purchasing power, that money goes straight into their bank accounts, straight into their pockets, and finds its way into the CPI because they spend it on goods and services. So I think we should be aware of that impact, that it was fiscal. And if that's the case, then the Fed's model, which says that you should have high interest rates so that some firms can't survive, people get fired, if that was the Fed's model, it didn't work out the way they anticipated. We have high growth, which is great. We have low unemployment. And I've always said that low unemployment and high growth, those are not inflationary. What you want that to be is productive economic activity. What I wouldn't want is for the lesson from all of this to be that somehow government stimulus, whether monetary no, or wait fiscal. Let's check this out. So, so you had. Have- so you have her, an economist, telling y'all that it's your fault. The government gave you too much money. You know, the government paid you to not worry. See, they, they like to, see that that's cold right there. Take that that paid you not to work part out. Take that out. Say that you you are a person that makes you know what I'm saying thirty thousand dollars a year, and somehow, some way, like I said. You found forty five thousand dollars, and now you are the problem. Cause like I said, they they cause you got excess buying power. Cause they they tell us of like that money from that was paid to you is still working to the system. If she's not, let, let's be real, working man. Is she talking about the money that was given to you, the unemployment money that was given to you, or those stimmy checks? 
That's not what she's talking about. But she's trying, she's masking it in because somebody else is like, what, what, what? It's that what else happened was wage inflation, as they said, you were able to get the, the job that would pay $10 an hour started paying $15 an hour. Excess money. Because you only a ten dollar hour worker, she said. And the fact that they gave you five more dollars, you upgraded your life. And that with your upgrade of your life is a problem to the CPI. And so what she's saying is once that all works out, in other words, once all once they finish laying you off, laying off all y'all that, that increased your lives and did all this stuff. Once that once y'all all have been reset back to your Ten dollar hour job or so forth, or where you was back in seventeen, eighteen. I think that's when we want to get you seventeen, eighteen. Well, once we get you back there, then the economy uh, uh, will look better. And so we got Powell hitting the rates, trying to push you out, force you out. She said it needs to happen, and so that you can be back to where you was, and the economy go back to where it was, and you get your two, three percent raise every year again instead of that big jump from. Your ten dollar hours to fifteen dollar hour job. Yeah, crazy, right? But anyway, if y'all like my analysis so far. Like, make sure you like and subscribe. You know what I'm saying? It helps the channel out real good. And the next thing we want to talk about is uh, there was um uh let's see UPS. UPS is about to strike, and your packages and so forth are about to be delayed and so forth. But there's something that happened. There was a deal made to keep the UPS workers from striking and packages continue to be delivered. And let's go to NBC and let's tell you about what happened have reached an agreement to avoid a historic strike. The two sides agreeing to a new five-year deal. After weeks of negotiations, more than 300,000 employees from the package delivery giant were preparing to walk off the job a week from today. Let's get right to NBC News correspondent Maura Barrett. Maura, what do we know about this deal? Walk us through. Yeah, guys, this is after more than a month of negotiations, and the two groups hit a sticking point, mostly over part-time worker pay. There was a lot that was included in this deal, and I want to remind you that right now this is just a tentative deal that needs to be voted on by uh, union members at the end of the month. But the big win is that they did get a pay increase for these part-time workers. Uh, some people were making as low as fifteen fifty an hour. They will be bumped up immediately to $21 an hour or more, and then there's also promises to make an increase of pay over this five-year contract. They've also promised to put air conditioners and fans in those iconic brown UPS delivery trucks to help out workers uh, in these record-breaking heat uh, situations. And there's some other uh, little nuggets buried in yeah. there that really do emphasize workers. I know they got a five-year deal done, but I'm trying to tell you, the best part about the whole deal, I'm pretty sure, hey, I'm glad y'all were searching for the, uh, y'all looked out for the part-time guy, but Get some AC in the bed? Oh, man. I, I, hey, hey, that's the biggest win ever. I, I'm pretty sure just getting the AC in that joint it, it, it would have been, been done. They're like, oh, we can get you the cold jacket. You need, you, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you need a coat. It'd be 100 degrees outside and 20 degrees inside. And I like that. Like I said, that would have done it all for him. That's all for him. Hey, glad the UPS and guys um, uh, avoided a strike and so forth. And then I like our last story, y'all. We're going to switch it up. Boxing. You know what I'm saying? I want to leave y'all with uh, highlights from a uh, boxing match between Spinks and Crawford. And here's the highlights of that boxing match. Go. Whose era this is? Will it be Errol Spence Jr.'s era? Or will it be Terrence Bud Crawford? Oh, Floyd Buddy Wayland tells me he's stumbling and he hasn't been hit. And that's the after. This fight because yep. like I said, people, this has been the Working Man Community Podcast. I am your host, Brandon T, and we'll see you next time. So like and subscribe to the channel. Help us out, and I'll keep bringing you good content. Peace.